it's me, Dr. Amy, and it's time for another Tuesday tip. So low homocysteine, is that a thing, right? This week, I really want to expand on this idea because the normal range does not go from zero to 15 micromoles per liter when we're testing blood homocysteine. It actually goes from five to 15, but having low homocysteine hasn't really been studied very much. The thing is, when we look at the methionine cycle, homocysteine is actually a precursor to two very important things. One is alpha-ketobutyrate, which feeds into the cellular energy production, which is obviously really important, right? Cells need energy to function, <laughs> so we need that. And the other is also crucially important, and that is it is a precursor to some of the things that feed into making glutathione, right? And glutathione is your master antioxidant. Hugely important. So both of these are crucial, and homocysteine is the precursor. So obviously, obviously we need it. We just don't want it to build up, which is why we don't see zero as the ideal homocysteine level, right? Uh, the normal range, again, goes from 5 to 15 micromoles per liter. Uh, I say optimal is actually 6 to 9, and we've had a conversation about that. We don't need to go into it again. But low homocysteine isn't really discussed very much yet in medicine, which is interesting. I think it will be one day. I think we'll have more research and more information about it because I suspect that low homocysteine can lead to some problems like, say, chronic fatigue or a higher likelihood of chronic fatigue because obviously cellular energy matters in fatigue. <laughs> hmm. uh, also, immune dysregulation, which is also important in chronic fatigue, but a variety of other things as well, simply because of that glutathione link, right? Now, we do know, obviously, that high homocysteine is a problem in immune regulation, but I do think that low homocysteine is a problem as well. The one useful little bit of research that I've seen about low homocysteine, uh, which was homocysteine below the normal range, right, below, four, below five, uh, is that it's highly associated with peripheral neuropathy. Um, that's considered largely idiopathic, right? If peripheral, peripheral neuropathy isn't caused by B12, then they just call it idiopathic. We don't know. We don't know why. But homocysteine is one of the reasons, right? And that's low homocysteine, not high. And so I think in the future there will be a lot more research into the roles of homocysteine and what really are the consequences of this low level. Um, but as of right now, a lot of research doesn't exist. Um, and with peripheral neuropathy, where they say, well, yeah, it's associated, but there's no real, like, how do we deal with this, right? <laughs> what do we do about it now? So, you know, this is very much in its infancy, but usually with things that your body makes, they're there for a reason. They're there for a purpose. And so just because there is a range doesn't mean we don't want any of it, right? We want more than none, less than too much, <laughs> which in my opinion is between six and nine micromoles per liter. And again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go back to the Tuesday tip at the beginning of this month, which will give you a bit more of a baseline information about homocysteine and what it does in your body and why we're talking about it when we talk about MTHFR mutants. I'll probably link that below because that would be really helpful. Okay, bye guys.